Welcome to Inside Scoop. I'm Simi Das. Joining me is Seth Rosenblatt, senior writer for CNET. Seth, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Simi. Okay, so I got a little bit of setup here. So imagine never having to worry about whether or not you're going over the speed limit or having to look for a parking space. That is part of the promise of self-driving cars. And today, Google, which has been working on a self-driving mm -hmm. car project for yep. a number of years now, yep. gave a handful of lucky people the opportunity to ride in one of these autonomous vehicles. Seth was one of those lucky people. Yes, I was actually one of those lucky people as well. Um, what were your thoughts? It was, you know, it was a... Uh, uh, unremarkably remarkable right you know like we were talking about earlier uh, the most amazing thing to me was this moment where the car is driving along there's a bicyclist in the bicycle lane just ahead of the car and the car sort of nudges over just a little bit in its own lane anticipating that the bicyclist might need some extra room mm -hmm. Incredible. I mean, human drivers don't do that. Yeah. The car that I was in did the same thing, except a bus was taking mm. up the entire lane next to us. Uh -huh. And so they refer to it as nudging. They yeah. also do something, the cars also do something really cool called blind spotting, which uh -huh. is they actively make sure that they don't linger and stay right. in other cars' blind spots. We check our own blind spots, mm -hmm. but we're not used to, as drivers, thinking about whether or not we're in somebody else's blind spot. It, it, it's, a, it's a very unusual thing. and. Having the self-driving car be safer than the human driver, I think, appeals to a lot of people. Um, one of the, there are some limitations though, mm -hmm. right? And one Absolutely. of them is, uh, you may have noticed this, as we are pulling out of the parking lot here, mm -hmm. the autonomous uh, driving feature is not engaged. It's engaged outside of the parking lot because the car can't quite handle parking lots yet. Not quite yet. And, and uh, one of the interesting limitations about the car is that uh, Google is redoing their entire mapping system. So Google Maps, which you know and love for navigation, is not being used in these vehicles. Oh. They're uh, uh, creating entirely new maps because these maps have in them uh, man-made objects such as traffic lights and stop signs. And it's not just that there's a traffic speed light. Speed limits too. Speed limits. There's an, it's not just that there's a traffic light in the map, it actually can tell you how high the traffic light is above the ground because as the car approaches it, it needs to know where to continuously look for the red or yellow or green circle. Um, tell us what it looks like inside because um, we do see that obviously there's the LiDAR and the camera sure. and the radar sure. um, and you see that that spinning movement that yes. tells you it's scanning the environment yes. um, at a very high rate. But inside the car, um, you see a couple of different things. So you mentioned the computer. Right, so uh, the co-driver uh, has a laptop sitting on his or her lap, and it has a, uh, a special uh, LiDAR-generated map of yeah. the area. And so you can see vehicles and pedestrians, and, and basically everything that's not you shows up as a, as a red box or rectangle. Mm -hmm. uh, you show up as a green box. And uh, it's, it's really sort of interesting seeing the world pass by in real time in this wireframe scenario. There's also, uh, uh, built into the car is the kill switch, um, which allows the driver or the co-driver to disable the autonomous driving instantaneously. And I'm sure in your ride you must have experienced this. Every once in a while the car would uh, kind of make an announcement, crosswalk or you know, manual that, engaged. That, that, that actually only happened... Uh, once or twice, except for the manual engage. Right. You know, it was, it, it, again, it was so unremarkable. It was the most perfect short little drive that I've ever taken. It was just a ride, right? Yeah. But we shouldn't get too excited about this because it's we... It's going to be a while. We don't know when it's going to show up. And yeah. has Google mentioned anything about whether or not, you know, this is going to make it to market at a definitive time in the future? They have a timeline. They want to see it in, in the ro on the road somewhere uh, by 2017. Um, so we're, it's only another three years for us, but when you think about the fact that they've been doing this for five years, that's really amazing. So th this has been, you know, by the time it gets to 2017, it'll have been an eight-year project. Um, they've only just now, just recently, started doing city road testing, um, which a year ago they weren't doing. Uh, a year, up until a year ago, it had been really freeway-only testing. So. This is something that's taking them a, um, a really long time to perfect. Well, when you're <laughs> asking people to trust a car with yeah. your life and your family's lives, I, I can understand why they want to perfect it, right? I'm not complaining. Yeah. Seth, thanks so much. Thank you, Simi. For Inside Scoop, I'm Simi Das. Thanks for watching.